getting more efficient. An introduction to various techniques and shortcuts to improve the efficiency of using Git. We will take a look at stash, aliases in Git, and GUI clients for Git. Stash. In section 4, we saw how branching can be used to divert your workflow on a project when an interruption is thrust upon you. In that case, a bug was part of the main trunk, just a few commits prior, and creating a temporary branch was an effective way to attack the problem. But what if you need to make a fix on something that lives on another branch? You don't want to abandon your current work, or suppose it could cause a major problem to commit your work unfinished. What can you do? It would be great to just take a snapshot of your current working state, clear out any changed files, and jump to another branch to work on some different problem. But making a commit here would really mess up the history that you were working so diligently to keep clean, clear, and concise. Well, this is what Stash was made for. Stash takes you back to just before any of the changes you staged. In other words, back to a state that matches the last commit, the pointer head. But it also makes a special commit of any staged changes. Back to our packed project for some practice. To our favorite new UI branch. For this exercise, we will make the working tree a bit messy to emulate work in progress. First, we will modify the file branching.txt. Then stage these changes and make a simple commit. At this point, switching branches would be no problem because our working tree is clean. But suppose we are right in the middle of some work. Let's make some more changes and stage them. And then leave some files in the working directory that are not staged. This is a very simple and contrived example, but it properly illustrates a messy working tree in Git. Some files whose changes have been staged and others in an altered state but not staged. But we have an open-ended commit here. Readme is staged and default.css has changes that are not in the index. Hold this concept in your mind for a moment. We will be right back to this. And the boss calls again with an emergency change that needs to be made in the More Text branch. If we merely switch branches, our work in progress will be lost. As a matter of fact, Git will be sure we do not make a mistake like this. In the rare event this is what you really do want to do, there is a force switch you can use. This is where we can use Stash. First, Notice the head now points to the last commit we made, and the files are still there, without our changes. Now, let's jump over to the More Text branch. There is no difficulty doing so now. While we are here, let's make another pretend bug fix. I only wish my real job was this simple. A few important changes here. A quick commit, that fixes the bug. But I have intentionally left this one dangling change on the commit message.txt file. I want to use this opportunity to demonstrate some more about stash. Let's stash this working tree now too, and then return to where we left off. Now, to restore our working state from the stash. But notice the status. Recall that we had staged some changes for the README file. This is the default behavior for stash apply. If we used the dash dash index switch, then the stage changes, the index, would also be updated to match what it was when we made the stash. Let's see how that would work. I hope you did not lack confidence that the staging information was still there to be retrieved. 
Git never forgets. Let's commit these changes. The command git stash list will show us all the current stashes. Notice that these are really commit objects. And the default name includes the branch you were on when the stash was saved. There are a few additional commands for manipulating and managing stashes. We had some experience with save, apply, and the dash dash index switch. You saw how to list all the current stashes. You can clean up by using drop and even take the contents of a stash and make it into a new branch. Git stash allows you to temporarily put aside some unfinished work. You can then check out other branches, make commits or changes, get that bug fixed, and merge or rebase the branch. And when you're ready to get back to where you were, just type git stash pop, and like magic you have returned. The really important thing to remember is that Stash will only preserve files in the working directory that are being tracked. That means they must be in the index. There are times when you perform a pull operation, and due to a conflict in your working directory, Git refuses to merge the upstream branch. In this case, you can use Stash, which cleans up your working tree, pull, and then use Stash pop to bring your current state back in focus. In the next video, we will take a look at the git alias capability.